Hello there, I'm Rebecca Turner, a sports dietitian and here to help athletes and fitness enthusiasts like you understand the basics of eating to perform by translating that pesky science into practical action steps that you can use in your everyday training. Now, as a sports dietitian, I have worked with many clients, mostly women who gained weight after beginning an exercise program, especially when starting an exercise program that includes resistance trainings with weights, whether that be body weight or whether that be in the gym throwing around weights. Most of them interpret that weight gain as the evidence that what they believe their whole life or their own inherent like wrongness. See, I'm so screwed up, even working out makes me fat. You know, maybe you have experienced this phenomenon before or maybe you are avoiding the weight room because you have heard of another lady's nightmare on how huge her legs or her arms or her bum got after she started working out with weights. I get it. It can be very discouraging to start something with such enthusiasm and have such high expectations and then you get pretty much it's like a slap in the face per se when you step back on the scale and it's went in the wrong direction. Of course, it's not the exercise that makes you gain weight. No, no, no. Um, and let me go ahead and put to bed the you're just gaining muscle theory too immediately. I truly do hate to be the bearer of bad news, but one does not simply build new muscle mass in a handful of days or even one to two weeks in the gym. Like all good things in life, building those beautiful lean muscles, it just takes time. All right, so if you're not crazy and it's not muscle mass, then what is it, right? Well, I could sum it all up in one word, inflammation. But for the sake of not leaving you completely hanging, I'll explain it just a little bit further. So stick with me, okay? Listen up. So when someone, you know, predominantly sedentary starts a new exercise program, they are inevitably going to feel some sort of muscle soreness, fatigue, or burn. You know those good feelings in the muscles um, the next day that tells you job well done in the gym, oh, you go for the burn, live sore, all those kinds of mentalities have their place. So when you work out, especially with some form of resistance, whether that be with weights or even your own body movements like a push-up, a pull-up, using the rubber bands, anything that adds resistance, it causes little tears in your muscle fibers. This is also referred to as microtrauma, which is what causes the soreness post-workout. Now trauma sounds scary, but there's no need to worry. When done right, it's really a good thing. Your body heals the muscle breakdown and it builds them back up tougher than ever before. That repeated process of breaking them down through resistance training and building them up with rest and proper nutrition is how you become stronger and fitter. It's part of a complicated process called adaptation. Now, anytime the body is in need of healing, whether that's from the flu, you sprain an ankle, you get a cut, or the, micro, uh, the muscle microtrauma from exercise, it's just a healthy dose of inflammation that's part of that kind of process. Now, inflammation triggers the body to bring in healing nutrients and microorganisms to help open up the blood vessels around that specific area and flush out any debris, toxins, and provide the building blocks for repairing. It truly is a miraculous process that's 100% normal. Only when it becomes chronic are there long-term implications of inflammation. Moderate time in the weight room is not chronic inflammation. Let me in that there, okay? But back to why you are seeing the scale go in the wrong direction, because that's really what you want to know, right? One of the key nutrients the body brings to the table during times of fighting inflammation is water. What else is going to help flush out the damaged goods and add, pump up those blood vessels, right? So if you are new to fitness or you're new to a different kind of training, say you're going from running marathons to now you're into weight training, there's going to be a lot of adaptation and they're going to be in the beginning to revive those muscles that you never knew you had, along with some extra water retention, which is going to give you significant weight gain in the beginning. So you're not completely crazy. You may actually see the number on the scale go up, but that doesn't mean you are gaining true weight. 
and that you stink at exercising. Good Lord, no. It means your body is just going through the motions and it's they're priming new muscles, they're reviving old ones, and you just need to be patient. Within six, maybe even eight weeks, you should see that shift. But, there's always a but. What if the shift never comes? When should you be concerned with the excess weight gain? All right, so if you experience a significant weight gain exceeding five pounds that does not begin to decrease rapidly after, say, the first month, then you are probably blaming the wrong set of plates. It's not the dumbbells or even the barbell that is making your bum expand. It's probably what's on your dinner plate. Ooh. So majority of the time when I sit down with a weight room depressed client, so to speak, when we get in and looking over their meal plans, we discover that it is the overcompensatory of eating, often in the form of recovery drinks and things that are marketed as healthy for post-workout snacks that truly are to blame. Even with good intentions, many of you start uh, with exercise or a new program. You buy the special workout clothes, you stock up on the sugary sports drinks, the protein bars, because you've been programmed to associate these type of foods and props with exercise, right? So, so many of us sweat for an hour, then we eat back every ounce of energy we just worked off in an effort to recover. This is where you really need to know what your goals are. And then later in the afternoon, while you're starting to feel some of that glorified soreness that we talked about that comes with the workout, you might let down your guard a little bit and then treat yourselves to maybe a little bite or a lick or a taste of something that actually ends up hindering your process and your progress. My heart truly aches when I think of all the women who've become strength training programs gain just a little bitty weight in the beginning and just assume that the weight gain was muscle and so decided that anything that might result in muscle building just wasn't for them. Oh, you're missing out on so much good opportunity in fitness. Now don't get discouraged with a little pre-weight training weight gain. Be mindful of your diet, very mindful, and be patient with the process. Talk with your trainer and you'll be lean and mean in absolutely no time. I do appreciate your time today. If you enjoyed the information in this video, please share it and let me know. If you have a sports nutrition question, I would love to hear it. Your curiosity helps drive my content, so I can't do this without you being curious about it. So let me know. You can find me on all the social outlets. Just search Rebecca Turner Nutrition. And until next time, keep in mind, athletes are actually built in the kitchen, but they are sculpted in the gym.